guys, Mr. Bankerberg here. Lesson 1.3 is all about linear equations. You can see down below I've got four objectives for this video. Number one, we're going to look at finding slopes of lines using two points. Two, we're going to use slope intercept form of an equation in order to graph some lines. Three, we're going to write out linear equations using a couple of different forms. Uh, and then number four, we're going to look at identifying parallel and perpendicular lines. We're going to start off by finding the slope of a line. Okay, now slope is the measure of a steepness of a line, so usually we might be used to looking at a graph when we're finding the slope. And when we're looking at a graph, we typically think of slope as being this rise over run thing. Uh, so if we were given this line with these ordered pairs down here, and we wanted to find the slope of this line, we'd figure out our rise, which would mean our vertical distance. So we just count this up, one, two, three, four. So our rise is four in this case. And then we look at our run. Okay, run means like your left and right movement. So one, two spaces is our run for this line. Uh, so stacking those up as a fraction, rise over run, we'd get four over two. And so we get a slope of two. But we don't always have a picture to look at when we're finding slope. A lot of times, all we have to work with are the ordered pairs. So another way to think about this, instead of like rise over run, let's think about what those things actually mean. Okay, that rise, when we looked at it, we said that was the difference, the change in our y value. And then we, when we looked at that run piece, okay, we were looking at how far we were moving left or right. So that would be the change in our x value. Well, mathematically speaking, when we're talking about change in values, we're talking about subtraction. So I've got a couple of formulas here that we're going to use for finding slope from just two points. Okay, now there are some slight differences with the order that the subtraction is happening in, but that's okay as long as we remember to keep those things in the correct order. And what I mean by that is in this top formula, we've got y2 minus y1. Well, since our y value from our second point came first, when we look at the bottom, the x value from the second point has to come first. Down on the bottom, here we've got y1 minus y2, and then on the bottom we've got x1 minus x2. Same thing happening, we used our y value from our first point, but then on bottom we had to use our x value from our first point. Okay, we have to make sure we keep those things in the right order. So I'm gonna run through finding the slope on this example real quick, uh, using these formulas, not by looking at the picture. So given the ordered pairs, we've got 1, 2, and 3, 6. Finding the rise or the change in the y value. Remember, we can either start with the first or the second point. doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to start with this 3, 6. We're just going to subtract the y values. So 6 is our y value on top. 2 is our y value on bottom. Since I started with the 6 from this point up here, I have to start with the 3 when I'm looking at my x values and then subtract 1. Uh, so across the top, 6 minus 2 is 4. 3 minus 1 across the bottom is 2. Hopefully we recognize that from earlier. Our rise was 4, our run was 2. And of course, this all simplifies down to just 2. I'm going to run through these four examples. Feel free to pause the video at any time so you can try these out on your own uh, and then start it back up in order to check your answers. So looking at this top one, we've got negative 2, 0, and 3, 1. Across the top, remember, we have to subtract our y's first. So I'm going to go 1 minus 0. Since I used the 1 first on top, I have to use the 3 first on bottom, minus negative 2. Uh, well, across the top, 1 minus 0 is 1. Across the bottom, 3 minus negative 2. Double negative is a positive. So we get 5 across the bottom. So that one has a slope of 1 fifth. For letter B, we've got negative 1, 2, and 2, 2. Um, so I guess our y value is the same, so it doesn't really matter which one we start with. 2 minus 2, um, same thing on bottom. Both of those were a 2, so we can't really tell which one we started with, so just pick one to start with on bottom. Let's go 2 minus negative 1. So across the top, 2 minus 2 is 0. Across the bottom, we've got another double negative, so I'm going to turn that into addition. 2 plus 1 is 3. Uh, now 0 divided by 3 is just 0 once we simplify that down. Next example, letter C, we've got 0, 4, and 1, negative 1. So I'm going to go 4 minus negative 1 this time. I started with the 4 on top, so I have to start with the 0 on bottom, minus 1. So 4 minus negative 1, 
double negative again is positive, so we get 5 across the top and negative 1 across the bottom, and simplifying this down, it's just negative 5. Last one, letter D, we've got the points 3, 4, and 3, 1. So I'm going to go 4 minus 1 across the top. Um, on bottom, since I started with the 4, I'm going to have to start with this 3, and then subtract off another 3. So 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, and now we run into a little bit of an issue because we've got 0 on the bottom of a fraction, and we know that's not allowed, so this one is an undefined value. Now that we've taken a look at slopes of lines, we're going to look at some different forms of linear equations. And we're going to start by talking about this y equals mx plus b thing, which is also known as slope-intercept form of an equation. And the whole reason it's called slope-intercept form is because it gives you the slope in the form of that m value, and they also give you a y-intercept as our b value. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this slope-intercept form in order to graph out some equations. So here's three equations that we're going to graph out, all of them written in y equals mx plus b slope-intercept form. So the very first one we've got y equals one-half x. Now it doesn't look like there's a b value here. There's nothing on the end. So what we assume is that it's like a plus zero on the end. Remember, when we're graphing out slope-intercept equations, we always start with this y-intercept first. It tells us where our graph crosses the y-axis. This one, it's crossing at zero. So that means we're going to start right here at the origin. And now we've got a slope of one-half. Well, if we think about slope as rise over run, we need to go up one space and to the right two spaces. So up one space, to the right two spaces. There's our two dots, and all we have to do is draw a straight line. Looking at our next equation, we've got y equals x plus 2. So now we've got a y-intercept of 2, so I'm going to go up two spaces, put my first dot. Uh, there is no number in front of this x, so what that means is it's an implied 1. And if we want to look at it like rise over run, we can always put this over 1. So what we've got is we need to go up one space and over one space. So start at your dot that you drew up first, go up 1 over 1. And then again, all we have to do is draw in our line. Last one we're looking at, y equals 4x minus 3. This has got a minus 3 for our b value this time, so that means I need to go down three spaces, put my first dot. So let's change colors here. Red, put our first dot there. Slope is 4, just like I did up above. I'm going to put that over 1 so we can look at rise over run. So we go up 4 spaces from our first dot. 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1 space. And then, just like we've been doing, we draw in our line. There are a couple of special types of linear equations and graphs that we can take a look at. The first one being a flat horizontal line something that looks like y equals b. Uh, since there's no x value in this equation, it means that our line has a slope of 0. So the example I've got drawn out on here, uh, we've got a flat horizontal line going through a y value of 6. So this is the line y equals 6. As far as the other special type, it's a straight up and down vertical line. Uh, and this one looks like x equals a. And this has an undefined slope. So if we take a look at our graph right here, this vertical blue line, its equation would be x equals negative 3, since it's going through our x-axis at a value of negative 3. Now slope-intercept form of an equation is really, really helpful if we're graphing out the equation. Uh, since we're given the slope and since we're given that b, that y-intercept, but if we're just writing equations, sometimes it's helpful to have another form that we can write our equations in. And there's actually two forms that we're going to take a look at. And the one we use really just depends on what we're given. First one we're going to look at is called point-slope form. So kind of like the name says, what we're going to be given is our slope m and some general point x1, y1. How we're going to write out that linear equation is using this form right here, where it goes y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So let's say we were given a slope of 3 
and we were given this point 0.1, negative 2. Well, if we wanted to write out an equation in point slope form, we just have to fill in our information. Okay, so we're going to go y minus our y value, which is negative 2, equals our m value, our slope of 3, times x minus the x value from our point, which is 1. Now, if we were trying to graph this thing out, we could go ahead and simplify this down and get it into slope-intercept form. Uh, so what we would do, I guess, is distribute the 3 on the right-hand side. So we'd get 3x minus 3. We can clean up the left by taking this double negative and turning it into a positive, so y plus 2. And then we'd subtract the 2 over to the right-hand side to get y equals 3x minus 5. I personally like to write my equations in this slope-intercept y equals mx plus b form. It just looks a lot cleaner, it just looks nicer than some of these other forms that we're working with. The other form that we're going to take a look at is called two-point form, and you guessed it, we're going to use this one when we're given two points. Okay, so here's our formula down below. Uh, it looks really, really similar to that point-slope stuff. The only thing we did is we replaced the m right here. Well, remember, m just stood for slope. So we just replaced it with what we know about slope of two points. Okay, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Nothing else has changed. So let's say we're given the ordered pair 0, 4, and 1, negative 1. We're going to go ahead and plug the information into our formula right here, and then we'll simplify it down to that slope-intercept form, just like we did on the last one. So I'm going to go y minus 4 equals, our y2 value is negative 1 minus 4 over 1 minus 0, and then x minus 0. So here it is written out in that two-point form. Looks kind of messy, kind of complicated. So let's clean it up. Let's go slope-intercept form. Across the top right here, we've got negative 1 minus 4. Well, that's negative 5 over 1 minus 0 is just 1. x minus 0 really isn't changing anything, so that's just a plain x. Left-hand side, we've got y minus 4. Last thing we need to do in order to get this in slope-intercept form is add the 4 over. So we get y equals negative 5x plus 4. Last thing we're looking at in this video are parallel and perpendicular lines. We're going to start with parallel lines here. The way we can tell that two lines are parallel if we're looking at their equations is by checking out their slopes. Parallel lines will have exactly the same slope. So in our first equation, y equals 2x plus 3, our slope is 2 because slope is the number in front of our x. In the second equation, we've got y equals 2x minus 4. I see a slope of 2 again, so that tells me right away that these two lines have to be parallel. As far as perpendicular lines go, slopes aren't going to be the same this time. Now we're going to be dealing with negative or opposite reciprocals. So given our first equation, we've got y equals 2x plus 3 again. Here the slope is 2. When we look at our second equation, we see y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. So we're looking at a slope of negative 1 half. Well, opposite reciprocal means flip the fraction, change the sign. So if we're looking at a slope of 2, well, 2 is like 2 over 1. If we flip the fraction over, that means 1 over 2, and then we change the sign. Okay, It was positive, so we make it negative. There's our opposite reciprocal perpendicular slope, negative 1 half. I guess that's it as far as this video goes, so please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.